Hello maths fans! The winning question I'm answering this week is what is the graph of x to the power x? Now I was actually asked this question at my Oxford University interview so you know it's a good one. When attempting to solve a problem in maths a good starting point is to consider slightly simpler or easier cases than the one you actually want to solve for. The idea being that we can use our knowledge of the easier ones to be able to help us to understand the more difficult ones. Here we're trying to plot the graph of y equals x to the power x. So let's start off really simple and just think about, well, what does the graph of y equals x look like? So y equals x, this just says that the y value is the same as the x value. So we must pass through 0, 0, we must pass through 1, 1. When x is 2, y has to be the same, which is 2. Same for 3 and 3, same for 4 and 4. And so the graph is just going to join up all of these points. So we get this lovely straight line, almost straight line, <laughs> lovely straight line passing through all of these points. And that is y equals x, the simplest case. Now let's make it a little trickier and consider y equals x squared. So as before, we can just plot a few points and sort of join them up to get our graph. And you can see that you've actually got a lovely parabola shape, which is going to increase off and above the board, like this. We can carry on like this, and maybe consider x cubed next. And in this instance, it's going to be even steeper than the squared one. And then what happens if we consider, say, y equals x to the fourth? So following the pattern, we'd expect an even steeper curve. Maybe for x to the fifth, an even steeper curve again. So even though we've not yet reached our x to the power x, we're starting to gain an understanding of how different graphs look for different powers of x. So far we've only looked at whole number powers of x, and that's precisely because they are the simplest cases. So now let's step it up a little bit and let's consider fractional powers. In particular, let's look at fractional powers between 0 and 1 starting with, say, y equals x to the half. So here we have y equals x drawn in red, and y equals x squared here in green. And we want to now draw y equals x to the half. So we have an equation. If we square both sides of this equation, we get y squared equals x. And you can see that these two are very similar equations. They've just had their x and y switched around. So if the graph of y equals x squared has this shape, then what do you think the graph of x equals y squared, or y equals x to the half, will look like? Well, it's going to be the same thing, but with x and y switched. So using the y equals x line and graph as a guide, we expect that y equals x to the half will just be reflected in that line. So excuse the bad drawing, it's quite hard to do this on a whiteboard, but y equals x to the half is just going to be the reflection of y equals x squared in the line y equals x for the reasons that we've just shown. So this is y equals x to the half. Now, if we want to consider other fractional powers, say y equals x to the one-third, or y equals x to the one-quarter, then we can use the same trick. We just take the graphs of y equals x cubed, or y equals x to the fourth, and just reflect them in y equals x. So you can see that you're just reflecting the whole number power in the line y equals x to get the fractional power. And this is an example of how using the earlier simpler cases can really help you to draw the more difficult ones. Now that we are a bit more comfortable with drawing graphs in general, let's consider the big one. Let's consider x to the power x. So we want to draw y equals x to the power x for different values of x. So let's start off by actually considering specific points on the graph. And let's make it nice and easy and let's consider, say, x equals 1, 2 and 3. Three. So when x is 1, y is 1 to the power 1, which is just 1. 
when x is 2, y is x to the power x, which is 2 to the power 2, which is 2 squared. 2 times 2 is 4. When x is 3, y will be 3 to the power 3, which is 3 cubed, which is 3 times 3 times 3, which is 27. So already we can start to see here that this function, this graph, is going to increase very quickly beyond 1. So if we consider this to be the point 1, and then this to also be the point 1, then from here onwards we're just very quickly increasing towards very large values of y as x only slightly increases. So this is very similar to the graphs of y equals x cubed, y equals x to the fourth. As the power of x is increasing, the graph shoots up faster and faster towards, like, off the page, towards infinity. Now we know what happens with the graph for x greater than 1, we can start to think about the difficult bit. What is happening between 0 and 1? And I've left this till the end because this is the hardest part. And this is why we were drawing the graphs of x to the power a half and x to the power a third earlier, because understanding the shape of those graphs and what's happening between 0 and 1 is very helpful when it comes to trying to plot this graph, x to the power x. So let's consider the point x equals a half. So for x being a half, y is about 0 0.71. So sort of here. Okay, that's good. We've, we've got somewhere we have a point between 0 and 1. Now let's consider a Second point, let's try one third, for example. So we move down from a half to a third, and this moves down a little bit to 0.69. We have this one here, and then we move down a little bit. Okay, again, good. We have a second point on our graph now. So let's consider a third point. What about one quarter? And this is a very, very interesting point because We've decreased x even further, down to 1 quarter, but our y value has actually increased a little bit again. What we've actually found here is the turning point of our graph. So we have a decreasing section and then it begins to increase. We can calculate the exact value at which this change occurs at, but for our purposes we don't need to. We don't need to be that accurate. We just want an idea of the general shape of the graph. And we know here that it has to have this turning point, this U-shape bend in its plot. And we can calculate other points. So we could, for example, consider two-thirds, three-quarters, and do a similar kind of calculation to as we have over here. And we would start to see that we would get values, and it would join up. And we get this lovely sort of tick shape, almost like the Nike tick. And then the question is, what's actually happening as x gets smaller and smaller? So what's happening between a quarter and zero? Doing some calculations for numbers less than one quarter, we see that the value of x to the power x actually begins to increase. So at x equals one quarter, we are at 0.71, about for y. And as x gets smaller and smaller, we start to see these points increasing. And the big question is, what is 0 to the power 0? What is this increasing towards? To answer that question, we're going to consider a simpler example. And again, use that knowledge and understanding to help us with the trickier case of 0 to the power 0. So let's consider the number 2. And to take 2 to the power 0, you actually have to take a limit. But don't worry, we don't need to go into that level of detail. It's just a case of spotting the pattern. What is happening as you take smaller and smaller powers of 2 is that the answer is tending towards a limit. And to be able to see what that limit is, you would need to continue this pattern. And you can try this on your calculator. Do 2 to the power of 1 divided by 1,000 or 1 divided by a million, and take 2 to that power. And you'll see that you get closer and closer to 1. And in the very limiting case of 2 to the power 0, you do indeed reach that limit and you do indeed get the final outcome of the pattern, this number 1. This is all well and good knowing this for number 2, but 
we can use this for any number. So you could put in number three here and follow the same procedure and three to the zero would be one. You could go even smaller. Maybe you could take a half to the power zero. Again, you would get one. You could even take a quarter to the power zero. You would get one. Maybe even one divided by a million to the power zero. You get one. And if you go back to our graph and think about where would one divided by one million, where would that x value lie? It would basically be on the axis. And the answer would be one. So you can see that these points here would start to increase. And the closer and closer you get to x being zero, the closer and closer your y value gets to one. And that is the final answer. That is the final part of our graph. Zero to the power zero is equal to one. So there you have it. The full graph of y equals x to the power x, drawn step by step and then patched together to get this lovely tick shape. This is, of course, only for positive values of x. It can be extended to negative values of x, but things get very tricky and we have to go into complex numbers, so I am going to leave it there. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I hope that you've enjoyed the video and, most importantly, I hope that I've answered the question and you now know how to draw the graph of x to the power x. Please do keep sending me your questions. I love receiving them and do keep voting. You can check out everything I make on TomRocksMaths.com. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram at TomRocksMaths. You can also subscribe to my channel. That would be great. And I will see you soon with the answer to another one of your questions.